that was some time ago. So yeah. at, the, at the end here, he, he made it to 80, made it past yep. 80, uh, eight, almost 87, 87, it looks like. So when was this film, and how many trips did you make to see it? Um, it so it was a short, we filmed a short in college that was, uh, it was like maybe 15 minutes, and so that was in like 2003, and then we knew we wanted to go back, that was about 10 years later, and then the rest of it was just, uh, I honestly don't know how many trips. Uh, because we would just go and kind of live with him, and there's no schedule at all. There's nothing planned. You're just on his schedule, so we would go days where we would just help him work and not just film. Uh, so. so when he said he had an extra room, yeah, he did just offer it to young lady. The extra well, you say there. So we actually were never able to go inside any of his house, and we kind of thought that was a, a privacy thing that we were. Uh, if you have questions, get ready in the next couple more and then turn to you all. I uh, want to know a little bit about the animation that you used in there. It seemed yeah. really crucial to talk about some of these historical events, but it, it was beautifully connected to the artwork, too. So, how did you come up with that? Well, so it was about, I mean, I, I knew that I wanted to have an animation sequence because I had these things that I had no idea what to show with them, but I thought they were really cool stories. Um, and so it was kind of a, I worked with a lot of people that are super, super talented. Um, and so I worked with um, a, a designer who originally had the idea of shadow puppets, but in the style of his art. Um, and so we kind of thought that was really cool, but um, they refused to be paid. They wanted to work for free on it, and so I kind of just said, make it. Uh-huh. And uh, they, uh, they were, unfortunately, they weren't able to be here tonight. One of them was on their honeymoon, Haley, who's a tremendous animator. Uh, works for Disney now and that bag. Uh, and uh, I kind of just said, like, just do your thing, I trust you. And I gave them the audio, and that's it. So, uh, no, very nicely done. Yeah. All right, let's turn out here for questions you might have right here. Who was the photographer that photography was great? So, a lot of it was me. Um, a lot of you can, I think you can kind of see I got better over time, too. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it was pretty shaky in the beginning. Um, but uh, so there was a couple different, um, on the first shoot we had two or three different people film. Um, when we went down for about, and, and lived with them for about like a week or ten days, and that was like four people filming. Um, but a lot of a lot of myself, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Other questions, way back over here. I was wondering, how did he treat you guys? He was great, I mean, oh. he, was, I mean he, tra- he treated us like a friend. Um, and it was very clear that, like, he did have that alter ego of kind of, like, the idiot just to get people out, but he was extremely smart, extremely friendly. I don't think that we paid for a single lunch, and we always went to the same place, this little cafe. He would buy us lunch. Um, and he was, he was, I think he liked, he definitely liked the attention, but he also just wanted company, I think. And so we, when we did it, like, we saw these totems go up from front to back, and they were taking, like, a week or so, because he was working on multiple pieces at that time, but always very friendly, very friendly to anybody that stopped in, really. What was his source of income? Did he sell the yard, or how, how did he well, make it? So, a lot of that, um, well, now that he's uh, deceased, I, I think he did sell a lot of it under the table, but he had um, a pension from the military, but um, he, his, I mean, he did not spend much.
gave the property away. Um, they did this, um, and there's a website that like explains the entire story. And I'm sure I'll get something wrong, but they did this like sort of um, permanence project on it to um, to keep the art intact. Uh, but it does require a lot of maintenance. I mean, he was doing all the maintenance, his oils, all this stuff, his paint. But um, but so um, but things definitely just started to deteriorate. I mean, I was there like maybe a year after he passed and like the shop was completely overgrown and stuff. So yeah. Has the film shown in Bolingville? Not in Bolingville, but we we showed uh, in Wichita and had a lot of people come to it's fairly close there. Yeah. Other questions, right? Yeah, the the curator again, would you repeat that who the Oh I think it's four five four five seven six something like that. Oh it's Greensburg though. Yes. In Greensburg. Yes. Yeah. And it's pretty well funded. You think it's going to yeah. continue to live on? Yeah. Okay. Did, did he ever talk about Ginsmore or oh, uh, Marshall or any of those other folk artists yeah. out there? Yeah, he was very familiar with uh, Ginsmore. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit. I don't know if we ever talked about it on camera, but, but yeah. I mean, he was, he, his, um, his brain was incredible. Uh, you might uh, let us know plans for the film, what, what, where it's going from here, where people might be able to see it. And so, uh, 